everybody and welcome back to Blanche Case Fitness. It's Wednesday and you know what that means. It's time for Jump Around, our weekly cardio class. Welcome back to the channel. Hello, hello. Still welcoming people back after my rest week, um, which is a little weird, but I guess it makes sense. Um, hi, hi everybody. I hope your week's going well. I uh, hope you're you're, you didn't reach this Wednesday with, uh, with too much exhaustion. Um, and if you did, well, then you're in the right place because, you know, as counterintuitive as it may seem, having a good, uh, a good workout can actually help to rebuild our energy. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, the leaves are coming in on the trees outside my window right now. And it is beautiful to look at. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, and it's been such a wonderfully rainy spring, which I appreciate so much. I mean, y'all are probably tired of hearing me talk about the rain, but uh, I always appreciate the rainy, the rainy weather so much. Um, and, uh, you know, it's never totally uh, something you can count on in Colorado just because of how dry the state is. So we've been having a very like traditional feeling spring which is very nice. Um, but today is 70 degrees, which is also nice because I'm gonna meet up with some people in a park after this. Uh, all of us, you know, fully vaccinated, but also just like feeling that terror of figuring out how to engage with humans again. So fun times, but uh, it will be a wonderful, wonderful walk. It'll be my second walk of the day. Holy crap, so much walking. Um, yeah, so I hope your week's going well. I hope your week's going well. I've been, I've been feeling pretty good, you know? I can definitely feel the ways in which the rest week helped, even though it was a little more intense and a little less restful feeling, you know, during the time. I can still feel how it helped. And that is a very good thing to remind myself of and to then remind y'all of uh, that, you know, even if we can't tell what's happening in the moment, eventually we will start to feel the beneficial impacts. And that goes for exercise too. Um, one of the most frustrating things, I think, with any fitness uh, journey is hitting that point where you feel like you're plateaued. You feel like nothing's happening, nothing's improving. You can't quite cross that, that threshold, that divide, what have you that you're working on. And it's always good to remind ourselves that stuff is happening. It's just happening on a level that we can't consciously identify, you know, because the benefits that we get from exercise are not just, you know, big muscles that I can see rippling out and, um, and you know, ah, feeling like I can run forever and stuff like that. Like they're also balancing, hormonal balancing and, uh, chemical balancing shifts in the types of muscle fibers that we have predominantly in our muscles, um, shifts in the efficiency of our energy systems, in the efficiency of our cardiovascular system. So much stuff that happens on this like cellular level, this way below the conscious mind level. And what tends to happen is that we're going along and going along and feeling like we're in a plateau and, and maybe starting to feel a little frustrated. And then one day things just click and I mean, everybody's had that experience. I will go, I will go out on that limb and say, everybody's had that experience of being like, whoa, suddenly everything just felt like it clicked. And that's because of all the work that your body and your brain have been doing behind the scenes that they weren't, they were like, you don't need to be involved in this. This is all, you know, tech work. Uh, you just wanna, you just wanna be at the main event and that'll be fun. So it's a good thing to remind ourselves of because it, it is true in many facets of our life. And I sort of had that, that experience over the rest week where the week itself like kind of felt overwhelming and really intense. Um, but I am feeling better, feeling a little bit 
uh, more balance in my energy levels. Definitely feeling better getting back on the mat and a little bit stronger. And, uh, you know, better able to pay attention to what I want my fitness goals to be for the next, uh, for the next few months. And that's really cool. So, uh, if you too have just come out of a rest week, I hope that you have similar experiences this week. Um, and I hope that everybody, I mean, at this point, everybody should be aware of the updated weekly class schedule. Uh, it started last night. Our Tuesday perpetual motion classes are now at 5.30 rather than 5.45. And then on Friday, functional home fitness is being moved a whole hour earlier. So instead of being 6 p.m. Mountain Time, it will now be at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. So just things to keep in mind. And, you know, believe me, I'm saying it over and over again. So it's not like the information's not out there. But uh, make sure you have your alerts turned on for the channel for Twitch so that you know when it goes live. Um, and you know that I usually go live like 10 to 15 minutes before I actually start class. So hopefully that does give you enough time to get ready in case you had missed the, uh, the timing. But oh, glad to know that no matter what does change, me needing to yawn, uh, apparently never will. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, my friends, it's jump around day. It's cardio day. Um, and I'm ramping back in to exercise. And as I talked about last night, I also have a lot of other activities that I'm trying to work into my schedule. So I'm going to be taking it fairly easy on myself in these classes, um, while I rebalance that. But that does mean that I focus a lot more of my attention on talking about form, which is really good because that gives you useful information. Um, but I'd say we should get started, uh, both because I have to walk somewhere after this is done and because, uh, I can't stop thinking about Mass Effect and I'd like to be able to play more. Also, I just realized <laughs> I had in my head, I, I don't know why I've been having so much trouble catching hold of what my actual schedule is today, but I had in my head that I was going to have to basically race out of the house after, uh, after the stream was done to get to this park meetup. And I'm suddenly remembering that no, actually, uh, it's not for another like hour after we finish class and I will have plenty of time. Hooray. Um, all right. But I still think it's time to get going because it's Wednesday and you know, we're, we may be a little tired. We may need that extra punch of energy, punch up of energy. So Let's get it going. So let's do our pre-class checklist. Hey, you've got your water in whatever vessel you use for water. Mm -hmm. uh, taking that pre-class sip just to check in on my hydration levels. Feeling pretty good. Still feeling pretty good. You've got your comfy clothes on, whatever that means to you. And I do mean whatever. There is, you know, you know how much I emphasize accessibility. And one of the places that the fitness world like tries to get you is in insisting that, you know, everybody has to have the spandex and the moisture wicking and yada, yada, yada. Uh, and if that's what you like to work out in, uh, go for it. I mean, clearly that's what I do, but it's not a requirement. If you are comfortable working out in a cotton t-shirt and a pair of shorts, like go for it. Pair of jeans, go for it. I don't care. Whatever you think, whatever is going to give you the comfort and the mobility to do class is what you should wear to class. Don't ever let anybody tell you that you can only work out if you're wearing moisture wicking spandex. Um, you've got your mat or mat sized space on the floor. And if you use your fitness wearable at fitness wearable, uh, now is the time to turn them on to high intensity interval training not outdoor walking. You see, my watch is now conditioned because I walk every morning. My watch is now conditioned uh, to have walking at the top of the list because it's the thing I do most frequently. 
<laughs> Which is not a bad thing, just a funny thing. All right. <sighs> Big sigh. Let's turn it on into a deep breath. Take one more deep breath, just sort of center ourselves and go, hey, we're here, we're ready to work out. And let's get class going because uh, I can't stop thinking about Mass Effect, so. <laughs> All right, it's warm up time, my friends. And you know what that means. Oh yeah, awkwardly, it means awkwardly scooting over to my mat on my puzzle pieces. All right. No, get back here. Dang it. All right. Everybody on your mats, on your backs, one foot crossed over the opposite knee, and as soon as you hear that horn go off, we will begin with hip rocks and bridges. Hiya. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, man. Now, if you also took a rest week, um, then, you know, how are you feeling today? How are all of your muscles feeling? I'm not feeling, you know, I haven't been feeling sore or overworked from yesterday, but right now as I'm doing warm up, I can definitely tell that I worked out yesterday and that yesterday was my first uh, more intensive workout coming out of my rest week. And so that's a cool thing to just sort of feel in my muscles and pay attention to as I am going along. <laughs> so, ah, just enjoy sliding back into exercise, figuring out where you are. If you need a little bit more of a runway to get back in, all right, other side. Or if you're really feeling uh, super energetic and inspired, after your rest week and there's no like one size fits all uh way that we feel after coming off of a rest week you know so if you're like oh man i did the rest week and now i'm just feeling kind of worn out while i'm trying to do exercise that's okay it's okay to ramp back up all right again my focus in this class and as a teacher and fitness instructor is to help you build that exercise as a tool in your toolbox for a healthy life. So our goal, our overarching goal is to uh, set ourselves up to be able to be active uh, and moving, living as active a life as we want to for as long as possible. And uh, that's all eminently doable. Absolutely. There is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be able to still be doing a class like this in your 60s or why you shouldn't be able to climb a 14 or, or go rock climbing in your 70s. But how we set ourselves up for that is by not feeling the need to jump straight from base camp to the summit without going through all the steps in between. So we're not here to push ourselves unhealthily. We are not here to be like, well, if I haven't, you know, tripled my lifting uh, in like, a month and I totally failed. Like we're here to get an awesome workout and to challenge ourselves uh, and improve our fitness, but also to listen to ourselves, to be kind to ourselves and to acknowledge that not every workout needs to be a PR busting 120% intensity workout. Okay, um, and if you're on the mat and you are doing the work, no matter what, you're doing a great job and you're getting a great workout. And that's the beautiful thing about these classes is even if you are just focusing 
on the bare minimum. You are still getting more than enough of a workout, okay? And uh, yeah, that this all ties in to trying to build out a healthier uh, approach and attitude towards exercise um, and trying to deprogram ourselves from a lot of really overly like no pain, no gain, you know, ignore, ignore your injuries and just keep going, going, going attitudes that we pick up in a lot of different places. They're everywhere. It starts, that programming starts when you're so young. And so one of the big things that we try to do here is to deprogram ourselves from that. So uh, that's a journey that I know I will be on for a good long while. And uh, if it's something that you struggle with too, then you're in good hands <laughs> and you're in good company too. You know, I think a lot of us struggle with that. So I need to remind myself of these things. I need to remind myself that it's okay for me to ramp back in and it's okay for me to lower the intensity of my workouts in these classes when I'm also planning to add other activities into my weekly schedule, you know, because we don't have an infinite amount of energy uh, and our muscles don't have an infinite amount of capacity and we do have to pay attention to, you know, a, sh a shift in one area of how we utilize that energy and that capacity is going to cause impacts in other areas and it's something that we have to be aware of it's a balancing act we are trying to work with the holistic system that is us where we are not trying to fight against it we are not trying to treat it as an enemy combatant um, we're trying to create a happy and safe balance and so that's uh something i definitely am working on right now and feeling much better about you know i think some of these conversations some of these lectures that i give to you are actually finally making their way through my own brain which is nice oh my goodness how's everybody's week going seriously though if you play video games and uh and you have any love uh and or interest for the mass effect series oh get the remaster it's so good this is a i mean i've been playing the mass effect games i i will legitimately do an annual playthrough um of all three of them, including ME1, which at this point is, God, 14 years old? Came out in 07? Yeah, 14 years old, which is ridiculous. Um, and I have been, you know, I have been getting to the point where I was like, I don't know if I want to play ME1 anymore, because like the, the mechanics hold, out, hold up remarkably well. Uh, and that is a really cool thing. And that's why it's still playable. But the graphics, like, you know, they were starting to show their age uh, as they are want to do. And, uh, you know, uh, there are some parts of the mechanics, like the, uh, the vehicle mechanics, oh my god, that were aging pretty poorly. And so I was definitely getting to a point where I was like, hmm, maybe I don't need to keep going back to any one. But the remaster has done a really wonderful job of A, just cleaning up the visuals of everything. Uh -huh, so they're just, it's, it's always been a stunning game. And now, you know, you get to watch it on super high def modern televisions and it doesn't look 
grainy or pixelated or anything like that. It's just, oh, my chef's kiss. Um, and they've made a few really nice quality of life adjustments uh, to some of the mechanics that I appreciate, but they've really, they've only made like small tweaks, you know, something as simple as for inventory management, being able to mark things that you want to sell and then sell them in bulk. Um, or, you know, adding a, adding a booster to the mango to make it a little bit easier to uh, traverse planetary uh, terrain. So they really have not made any updates that are gonna get in the way of the experience of the game. And, oh, it's just thrilling to be playing it again. And just feeling, feeling like, wow, oh, I feel like I'm experiencing this again for the first time. So I'm still in any one. I'm, I'm not blasting through it nearly as quickly as I thought I would, uh, considering all that stuff. But uh, yeah, just what a, what a game. The Mass Effect series, that first game was the game that showed me that video games were an art form in their own right, you know? And it was just such a, it was that game, it was Mass Effect 1 and the first Bioshock game. Those were the two and they were just so stunning and so impactful uh, and still are. I mean, I don't go back and, the thing with Bioshock is it's also a game that just is really viscerally scary to me to play. Um, and I don't, I don't, no, I did play it all the way through once. Um, but yeah, it is definitely not a game that I feel the need to go back and replay. Um, but Mass Effect just is so wonderful to go back and experience again. Uh, and that whole, that whole original trilogy, and I haven't played Andromeda yet. I am going to play it this year and just see how it is. I know they made a lot of updates to it after it launched. Uh, it was just, it was too close to home to try and, and play it considering how much I love the original trilogy. But that original trilogy, just like, it ties together so beautifully. Uh, the three games are just masterful. Uh, it's just incredible storytelling from start to finish, incredible acting. Um, all of the, all of the voice actors in that series are just phenomenal. And, you know, the ways in which decisions that you made in the first game come back around, you know, maybe not as huge plot points, but at the very least is like news articles, small bits of data or NPCs that you encounter again after however many years. Like, it's just lovely. It's so well done and such a cohesive whole. So yeah, if you're looking for something new to play um, and you either remember loving Mass Effect or have been interested in trying it out, now is the time. Now is definitely the time. Get that remaster. Enjoy the beautiful, beautiful imagery, graphics. Just, oh, yeah. Check it out. Check it out. That's, that's Blanche's video game recommendation for the week. Uh, probably for the month. Who am I kidding? Oh, 
I'll be playing it for a whole while. <laughs> but, uh, oh man. Yeah, so I definitely <laughs> will probably be playing a little bit after class. And I am not ashamed. Woo! All right. Second to last cardio. My goodness. We are powering through our warm up. And let me tell you, it is stuffy in this room. <laughs> I definitely need to figure out some sort of uh, ventilation for this room because otherwise it is just really, really intense to get through class. And that's another thing that another environmental component that needs to be factored in to our overall intensity of exercise, you know? Um, no matter what we're doing, it is really, really important to take into consideration, you know, the temperature, how hot, how much humidity, and how hydrated are you, uh, you know, to make sure that we are not putting ourselves in danger of heat stroke or anything like that. So definitely a good thing to pay attention to as you are planning out your workouts. God, I got a haircut recently. It is so much nicer <laughs> now that I don't have a giant heavy mop of hair on my head. Mm. All right. Woo! Water, very important. Make sure you're hydrating all through class. This should be pretty much empty by the time you're done, okay? Mm. All right. So this is our first jump around in a while that hasn't been tied to our April Powers programming. So we're just gonna take it kind of easy today. I think probably go back and forth between 2010s and 3010s with a couple of Simon Says uh, sets in there. And I think actually we're gonna start with one of those. So we'll have five minutes and three exercises plus our active rest exercise, which is cross jacks, okay? Um, and I will tell you when to switch from exercise to exercise, okay? So let's see here. Our first exercise, jump rope, okay? Just literally, I don't care that you don't have a jump rope, just mime spinning it around and time the jumps, same way you would if you actually had a jump rope, okay? Uh, and then we're going to, uh, ooh, pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to do some uh, ankle reaches. So legs straight up and down, engage that core, hand to the outside of the opposite ankle, and other side, hook and hook, okay? <sighs> and third exercise, I think, is going to be... Uh, Mm. So let's start from a plank from up on the wrists, then 
down to one elbow, down to the other, up and up, and then reverse the arms, okay? That's a new thing, we haven't done that before. All right, so jump ropes, ankle reaches, and the planks moving between hands and elbows, and then uh, our active rest, all right? So everybody on your mat, when I say go, just start doing cross jacks, all right? Go. So cross jacks, super chill, really emphasize the rest in active rest. You don't want to be going, huh, 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 okay? Uh, that's not our goal here. All right, and now let's do some jump ropes. So the nice thing about the jump rope, there's not a ton of form that goes into it, but I do want you to make sure that you're engaging the core and that's going to help stabilize everything, keep you in one spot on your mat, prevent you from sort of drifting or letting your limbs go too far out. All right, and now the ankle reaches. Remember, if you are struggling to keep your legs straight up and down, you can add a bend in the knees. Just make sure that you pull the knees closer to your chest so that your feet are still pointing straight up in the air rather than bending them farther away because we still want to be reaching up towards those ankles, okay? All right, and now our planks. So we're going just down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. All right, really focusing in on shoulder strength, shoulder stability. So when we're going from front plank here, and I put one hand up here, I push away from the floor with that shoulder, and that helps me to get my other hand down on the ground to get back into that plank position, okay? All right, and now just back to your cross jacks, okay? Back to your cross jacks, chilling. <laughs> um, chilling, we've been sort of crawling all over the place right now. And uh, so give yourself a second to bring your heart rate down a little bit, okay? And then back to those ankle reaches. All right, so you wanna make sure that it is the abdominals that are contracting and that's what's lifting your shoulders and your chest off the ground. So no pulling ourselves up using our head and neck or trying to you know, pull with the arm and just leaving the shoulder blade on the ground. That's very tempting. Also doesn't actually engage the muscle group we're trying to work. All right, jump ropes please, jump ropes. Ah. Yeah, I like doing, uh, doing our jump ropes without the rope because there is no danger of whapping yourself in the toes, which is really frustrating and painful when you have bare feet. Um, you know, less of a problem if you work out in sneakers, and obviously you can work out in sneakers, that's totally fine. But for me, it's a benefit. Um, and also, you know, jump roping on a mat, you can get it caught on the edge of the mat, and that adds in issues as well, etc., etc. All right, back to cross jacks, please. Back to cross jacks. Nice and chill, just doing our little jumps. And remember our modifications, you can also just do this, or do the arms, like kick the feet forward. So, just make sure that you don't stop moving. That's the main thing. All right, and now back to those planks. Okay, so down, down, up, up, and then switch arms. And switch arms again. Try to make sure when you get to this plank, you're in that nice straight line. Okay, same thing when you get down on the elbows. All right, and now ankle reaches. 
Give me some ankle reaches right here. Ha, huh. yeah. Checking in, am I engaging my core to lift me up so that I can tap those ankles. And last 15 seconds, jump rope for me, jump rope. All right, finishing it out nice and strong, doing those jump ropes. Make sure the core is engaged. You've got five seconds, almost there, and relax. Good job, everybody. Woo. It's a lot harder to do, uh, Simon says that's what I'm trying to do more of the exercises. <laughs> but we made it work. We made it work, everybody. All right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Water is just, mwah. chef's kiss, so beautiful. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. All right, how we feeling? Nice, uh, nice, Simon says, to kick us off. Now I think we're gonna do a 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off set. And I think we're gonna do three exercises. So for all the vapor powers, we we're basically just doing two exercises. Uh, and now we're going back to three. Ooh. Ooh. All right, what are those three gonna be though? That's my question. So let's do some flying chickens you know how much I love, uh, love our poultry friends. So feet together, thumbs at chest height. You can hook the, your thumbs behind your bra straps if you wear a bra. Jumping the feet out in the air, lifting the elbows as you jump, and then bringing, back, bringing everything back to its starting position when you land, okay? So that's number one. Number two is gonna be shrimps. Uh, everybody's favorite. Hiya! Just shrimping along like so. And then when you hit the mat, end of the mat, back the other way, shoulders, then hips, shoulders, then hips. Remember, these are top does, so you do have a rest period, which is awesome. And then our third exercise, uh, oh man. Let's do it, let's make it mountain climbers. So from that front plank, driving those knees forward, keeping the shoulders directly over wrists, keeping the butt out of the air, okay? Those are our three, flying chickens, shrimps, and mountain climbers. First sound does not mean go, remember? You still have a little bit of rest. <sighs> Enjoy it. Because soon, so soon, we will be jumping up and down. Uh, yay! There we go. And again, with this exercise, keeping that core engaged is going to help because we're moving our limbs all in different directions. And we want them to snap back to the same place. And so having that core as a nice stable center point is going to help pull everything back so that we're not, you know, wildly shuffling around on the mat or losing our balance or anything like that. All right, and now for our shrimps. Oh, you know how much I love shrimps. We do them a ton. Um, and they can be really hard uh, if you are not used to isolating the movement of different body parts, okay? So you have to be able to move your shoulders to the side without bringing anything else along, and then to do the same thing with your hips. So don't, uh, don't feel like you need to speed that exercise until you feel more secure. All right, and then our mountain climbers. 
If you start to feel your butt drifting up in the air, that's all right. Just push it back down, okay? Push it back down, and that will help bring the shoulders back to the correct position as well. Because if your butt's up in the air, then your shoulders are probably pushed back as well, okay? And remember, 30 seconds, it doesn't feel like that much of a difference, but it is. You know, if we're doing three exercises, three times through, the jump from 20 second intervals to 30 second intervals puts an extra minute and a half onto our overall work time. And that is no joke, all right? So if you are going through your set and being like, well, it's so weird. I usually feel like I can blast through this, but I feel like I keep hitting this wall point on the longer intervals. Well, uh, that's probably exactly what's happening, okay? You have not yet built up the overall stamina to be able to maintain the longer amount of work at the same intensity level that you can maintain the shorter amount of work. And that's the, the thing about Tabatas. Overall, uh, what we like about them is that they provide us an opportunity to sort of bring a sprint mentality into the activity that we're doing. And that's really awesome uh, and really good from a training perspective. Uh, but we still have to pay attention to how long that sprint is going to be. And we have to adjust accordingly because the energy level that I can maintain for a 20 second run of mountain climbers is not necessarily the energy level and the intensity level that I can maintain for a 30 second run of mountain climbers. All right? So keep that in mind. While you're doing your flying chickens, I want you to make sure that you can feel a springiness in your knees, that they are not locked and sort of thudding against the floor. You want a slight bend, you know. We're not like squatting when we land, but you don't want to be landing on totally straight legs because that's going to be jamming your knees and that is just something we want to avoid basically in all activities, all right? We want to avoid jamming our knees against the floor and particularly depending on what type of surface you're working out on, you really want to pay attention to that. So, you know, I have the puzzle pieces, so I have a, a nice amount of padding, and that helps. If you're on a thinner mat, or on, you know, wood flooring, or, <laughs> God forbid, on, like, concrete right now, well, A, I hope you're wearing sneakers so you get at least some sort of padding, and B, really pay attention to your joints, okay? Because our joints get very easily impacted by the type of surface that we're on. And so, if there's one place that you want to start with when it comes to uh, making adjustments in your overall exercise environment, the surface that you're on is a good place to start. And that doesn't mean, you know, reflooring your entire room. That just means, all right, how is the mat that I'm using? Is it giving me enough padding, enough cushion, or do I need to get a second mat to lay on top, or do I need to get uh, something thicker, like these foam 
puzzle pieces. Um, and all of that is really important for us to keep in mind. So if you are at the place where you're like, all right, I'm ready to start investing a little bit in my workout space, that's where I would recommend that you start, okay? Mm. All right. Woo! Okay. Now, let's do a 2010. Nice, a nice 2010. Mm -hmm. So, I thought of an exercise today that we have not done in a good long while. And that is kneel to squats. So I'll put them on a 20 second one so you don't hate me. <laughs> so starting from a kneeling position, our goal is to keep our head the same distance from the floor at all points during this exercise. So kneeling, I've got a flat back. I'm gonna bring one foot flat on the floor, then bring the other foot to meet it. Now I'm in this really low squat, then bring one knee back and the other knee back and then do, repeat it, starting with the other leg, okay? So basically, it's the same thing that we did with the, those planks, just using our legs instead of our arms, okay? So we've got kneel to squats. Uh, let's see here. Let's do our, um, huh. no, did I do those yesterday? I totally did those yesterday. Let's just do TikToks, all right? So back and forth and back and forth, okay? Um, and then for our last party trick, let's do, oh my goodness. Sometimes it's hard to figure out what I wanna do. Um, let's, Oh, let's do burpees, what the hell. You know how to do burpees. I don't need to tell you how to do burpees. All right. I have to work backwards and remember what the first thing I did was. Ah, yes. So kneel to squats, and then TikToks, and then burpees. All right. Beautiful. We can get going. Uh, and only 20 seconds of burpees, you're fine. You're totally fine. See, we're easing back in. All right, everybody on your mats. Remember the first sound does not mean go. Oh, first sound means stop, chill. All right, that sound means get in position, get ready, get set, and go. So when we think about our bare minimum, what do we think about? Starting on time, stopping on time, and doing the exercise correctly. So we want to make sure that we are in position so that the second that the timer goes off, we are moving. We're not waiting for the end of the timer. We're not hearing the timer and then going, oh, I need to get into a totally different position. We are immediately moving. And that is how we keep ourselves going strong and maximizing the amount of these 20 seconds that we spend actually moving, okay? Uh, now the thing about doing burpees on a 20 second timer that I want you to remember is that you're not going to be able to do as many overall reps as you can in a longer amount of time, which, I mean, might feel fairly obvious, but, you know, we usually are only doing our burpees in the warm-up, which gives us a whole minute to focus in on them and get a bunch of reps done. So uh, it's just a good thing to remember. You're not gonna be able to do a ton. I get, I don't know, four, I think, into, the, into those 
those 20 seconds, sometimes five, uh, if I'm really going for speed. But yeah, just again, keeping in mind that when we shorten the amount of overall time, we reduce the number of reps that we can feasibly get done in that time. And that's okay. And as we keep working and keep strengthening, you may get to a point where you're like, ooh, I, uh, I got an extra couple of reps in there that I wasn't able to do before. And awesome, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> um, but if you're not, if you're not able to do that, don't worry about it, okay? Don't worry about it because it's, it's a function of physics and physiology, you know? There, there is, in fact, an upper limit on what we can achieve, and that's okay. Uh, and anyone telling you that that's not okay does not have your best interests at heart. Um, it's a very, like, look, you hear me uh, do this particular rant a lot, but it's a very capitalist mindset, you know, the assumption that uh, we can constantly grow, constantly increase our gains, our speed, beat that PR, etc., etc., and there is absolutely value in challenging ourselves, in giving ourselves targets that we want to try and hit, goals that we want to achieve. That is valuable, absolutely. But we also have to remind ourselves that A, some goals take longer, to achieve than others. B, some goals are, you know, just not achievable because of, you know, factors outside of what we can control. And C, that even if you're not hitting those exact goals, you're still making improvements. You're still caring for your health and that is always, always worthwhile, okay? Even if you didn't hit exactly the goal that you had for yourself, you're still achieving so much and you should always be proud of yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, oh. Man, okay. Let's do, let's do another uh, Simon Says bout, okay? So same thing that we did the first time, just with Al, three new exercises, and hopefully me not running into the wall. Uh, so let's do skips. Oh yeah, just skipping through our mountain stronghold, our beautiful meadow in the sound of music, what have you. We've got skips. Uh, let's do some push-ups. Remember, any variety, wall, incline off of furniture, full plank from the knees, half plank, half wave, uh, full wave. Just make sure your shoulders are directly over your wrists and that as you go through the full range of motion, that your elbows stay glued in to your sides, all right? So skips and push-ups, and then let's do a pulsing front superhero. So extending arms and legs, lifting everything up and down, up and down, up and down, and our same cross jacks as 
our active rest. So, on your mats, everybody, and start doing those cross jacks. Go. All right. So, we're just chilling. And again, you can do the modification if you want to. You just got to be moving. <laughs> All right. Moving along. And now, let's do some skips. So, again, making sure the core is engaged so that we can pull all of the limbs back down. We're keeping them on these nice tracks. So, knee goes straight up, arm goes straight up. They both come straight down as we're replacing them and other side. That core engagement also helps to pull the knee up as you're hopping, okay? So, all right. And now push-ups, my friends, push-ups. Oh, man. Again, do not let anybody make you feel uh, like you should be forcing yourself to do a style of push-ups that you don't feel ready for, okay? So, if you can most consistently maintain the form for push-ups from the knees, do it. Push-ups off the wall, do it, all right? The important thing is to be able to do it consistently and to maintain that form, all right? All right, and now front superheroes. So, huh, up and down, up and down. And you're gonna be engaging a lot of different muscles because you're engaging the core, but you're also engaging and contracting through the back to lift the chest up. So it's, it's a deceptive exercise. Like, it looks simpler than it is. Um, all right, and now back to those cross jacks, please. Back to those cross jacks. Oh, just chilling, making sure that you're moving, trying to get that heart rate down just a little bit, okay? And now let's do uh, back to the front superheroes. Back to the front superheroes. Yeah, I know, you just did them. And now you're gonna do them again. Hey, uh, remember, you can always integrate exhaling on the effort to help get you up into that position, okay? Okay. Oh, and, oh God, I totally forgot what our second exercise was. Oh, push-ups, uh, but don't do that. Go to skips, please. <laughs> Sorry, we're doing skips right now. Oh my goodness, oof. Make sure you're paying attention to how you feel. So this is a lot of shifting planes. You know, we're getting all the way down onto the floor on our stomachs, and then we're gonna stand all the way up. And if you are feeling any dizziness or just like blood rushing your head when you make that transition, take a second. I know that we're trying to move the whole time, but I'd rather you stop moving for a second and get under control than faint. All right, now back to push-ups, please. Now back to push-ups. All righty, doing our push-ups, really making sure that we keep those elbows glued in. It just really focuses the effort on the triceps, which is what we want to be doing. Really focus in. There are other types of push-ups. This is just my preferred one. All right, back to those cross jacks, please. Back to those cross jacks. Da, da, da. Just chilling here in cross jack land. What a weird exercise. All right, and back to push-ups. I know, back to push-ups, wild. We're gonna be rushing a little bit through some of these last exercises. So bust out a few reps. Now give me a few reps of the superheroes. Whew. Yeah, okay. And now up and you're skipping for the rest of the timer. OK, 
Okay, so just about 15 seconds. So that was a lot of fast movement. We're gonna get through the rest of this five minutes. You've got two seconds left and rest. Woo! Ah, oh, that got exciting towards the end. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Man, that's the nice thing about push-ups in the front superheroes. You don't have to go very far. <laughs> all righty, all righty. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, water. Water, I love you. <laughs> okay. Let's do 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Uh, 30 times. English, I speak it. Okay. Three exercises. First one, whoops, is gonna be jumping jacks. So we wanna do bigger jumping jacks. However, if you have shoulder issues uh, and they get impacted by the bigger range of motion arm movements, you can still keep your elbows bent. That's generally what I do for jumping jacks. I'll make the jumps themselves wider, but I'll keep my elbows bent just to protect my shoulders a little bit. Okay, so that's totally fine. That is totally fine. And then let's do some bicycles because you know how much I love those. Actually, uh, let's do extended crunches, side one and then side two. Those will be our other two exercises. So one arm uh, up above our head, but not on the ground. So the shoulders engaged, contract, Lift the arm and the opposite leg up to meet each other. Bring everything back down, but don't put anything back on the ground. And then up and down, up and down. And then third exercise will be the other side for that, all right? All right, so jumping jacks and then extended crunches side one and two. Do to do. Let's get that going, all right. Woo! Dun, dun, dun. That was not the start sound. That is our get ready sound. Feet together and go. So, uh, as opposed to the warm up, where we're doing bare minimum versions of jumping jacks, for this, we can speed up our tempo. So, we're getting more reps in overall. And we can jump the feet out farther so that we need to use a little more power, a little more intensity to jump the feet out and jump them back in, okay? So that's how we uh, increase the intensity of the jumping jacks from what we do in the warm-up. All right. And again, as with any and all abdominal core exercises, making sure that it is truly the abs and the obliques that are generating the movement. So for these extended crunches, you're really using the obliques. So along the side here to contract. As they contract, that pulls everything together. That pulls the leg up and that pulls the chest up so that the arm can come to meet the foot up in the air. Okay? So that's what you want to feel. And if you are not feeling that engagement, then, <laughs> well, frankly, you're uh, not using the right muscle group. And I promise you, I promise you, if you're not feeling the engagement, it is not because your abs are too strong for the exercise, okay? That's what I totally told myself for years with a lot of these abdominal exercises. I was like, and I've always had a pretty strong core 
his dancer. Um, and so I was like, oh, you know, it's fine, I'll do the exercise, but I don't really get anything out of it because uh, my, my baseline level of strength is just too much for this exercise. And that really wasn't it. That really was not it. It was, instead, that I was compensating with other muscle groups and just didn't realize it. So I know I focus in on this a lot, but it's because it is so easy to do that, even if you've been active and working out for most of your life, you can still miss these things and miss them for extended periods of time. I mean, it was several years before, it was last year, truly, when I started teaching this class was when I really started digging in to some of those exercises and just going, oh my God, it had nothing to do with me being too strong for the exercise. It really was that I was not like focusing the energy and the contraction on those abdominal muscles. So they just weren't getting worked as hard as they should have been. Um, so no matter how long you've been doing whatever activity you do, there is always more to learn. There's always more to discover. There are always places, even with things that you've been doing for years, where you're gonna suddenly go, huh, wow, I haven't actually been doing that correctly and I didn't notice. Or, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much this exercise was impacted by the strength or weakness of this one muscle group or this one joint until something changed there and I felt the difference. Um, it's just, it's amazing. And honestly, it's one of my favorite things about exercising and about trying new activities. You know, like I'm always so very in favor of trying new activities because there are so many different ways to move these bodies of ours. And I highly recommend learning as many of them as you can, trying them out, finding, you know, muscle groups that you didn't realize you weren't using until you tried boxing and went, oh my God, I didn't know that there were muscles there. Um, or, you know, going hiking and being like, holy crap, you know, that's a, an area of my legs that doesn't usually get worked. Uh, there's just so much to learn and to do. And, uh, it helps to keep exercise and fitness fresh and interesting and exciting uh, to try new things and to shift up your schedule and not just assume that because you've been doing this one thing forever and ever that you have to keep doing it forever and ever. Oh man, water time. Da da da. Yeah. Good grief. Oh. Mm -hmm. Woo! Dang. Dang. Hydration. So important. See? Almost to the bottom of this. Hopefully you are too. If you aren't, you may not be drinking enough water. Hydration. It's so important. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right, we're gonna do one more set and uh, it's gonna be 2010s and there's just gonna be one exercise. We go through eight times total, so it's a total of four minutes, one exercise, but dealer's choice, okay? You get to choose the exercise, but choose carefully because whichever exercise you choose, I want you to stick with it 
till the end of class, okay? So 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest, eight times total, four minutes in total. You get to choose, but choose wisely. Why? Oh man, that is a big hairball. Go away, go away. Shoot, I need to sweep in here is really the answer to that question that nobody asked. Okay. Alrighty. Oh my goodness. Here we go. So everybody on your mats, it is time to finish out class. Uh, whatever you decide to do, I am really not sure. I, I'm gonna, well, I'll find out in one second. All right, there we go. <laughs> I made a decision. Good job, me. And I hope I don't regret it or I will go in. Bad job, me. But there we are. So the beautiful thing about the last Tabata of class is that we don't have any reason to hold back. We do not have to save any of our energy. Uh, we're not worrying about, okay, I need to be able to get through the rest of this hour. You've gotten through the hour. You're here, okay? You've made it. So now is the time to take all those remaining pockets of energy and leave them all out on your mat because you do not need to hold them back anymore. You can just go for broke, all right? So, you know, it's the experience when you're running a half marathon and you're finally at the last 0.1 miles and you can see the finish line and you know that you are going to get there and you dig in and you find that last bit of energy that you didn't even know you had left and you use that to get yourself across the finish line. Oh, all right, man. Oh, what a class. What a class this has been. All right, my friends, you are halfway through. As we head in to the second half of this timer, I want you to check your form, okay? I want you to make sure that your form is just as good right now as it was when you started this Tabata two minutes ago, okay? So you do not want to be, you know, sort of slowly or quickly losing form and being like, well, that's fine. Yeah, I'll just keep pushing forward. No, always take the time to reset, to get your form back together. That's the foundation of what we do. Our form is what protects us, it's what grounds us, and it's what helps us to be able to work out for as much of our lives as possible. All right, last two sets. So now we're getting those cheerleaders out. We are setting them down on the floor next to your mat, next to your laptop, your TV, your phone, whatever you're using to watch class. All right, they are doing their best floor routines. They are throwing their pom-poms in the air. They are so, so proud of you because you have made it through an hour of class, high intensity interval training, and here you are using the last of your energy to really bring home strong across that finish line. You can absolutely do this and then take that energy out into the rest of the world. Oh man, good job, everybody. 
Wow. Okay. Mm. Oh. Oof. All right, down on the mat. Down on the mat. Let's, you know what? Let's start with just a really quick child pose, which is a lovely yoga stretch. Um, and we just sit back on our heels. I'm gonna take my knees out so they're on either side of, uh, of the mat. This is where I point out as well, I am not actually a yoga instructor. So sometimes I will use terminology that is common in yoga classes to describe something because it gets the point across quickly, but I'm not a yoga instructor. I do not purport to be one. Um, and I am making whatever form tweaks I deem appropriate for the uh, exercises that I'm recommending. So we're sitting back on our heels. Our knees are on either side of the mat and we're just gonna take our hands forward, fold over at the hips, and we're just gonna stretch out right here. And we're just gonna take four deep breaths just right here, okay? Just to get our heart rate down, get our breath down, all right? Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. Walk your hands back up. Come onto this position and just, just a couple of times, round your back pushing your chest away from the floor, and then bow it down into a U shape, okay? Just back and forth, just a couple of times. Now, we're gonna do a new stretch. And this is going to open the hips up uh, very intensely, so please be very careful with this stretch, okay? So, Basically, my goal is to take my knees as far apart from each other as I can and to get my hips on the floor, okay? And so I just, I'm basically opening up my hips as wide as I can. And if you're not used to this exercise, bring your knees closer together behind you, okay? So I will def de definitely have more flexibility and take the exercise, uh, the stretch a little bit farther apart, but do not copy that unless you have the flexibility and you feel like you can do it safely. And we're just gonna chill here and we're gonna take four deep breaths. All right, here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. Just extend your legs behind you and then pull them together. You can roll up. Woo! All right. Well, that definitely stretched out the hips. Let's just do our quad stretch. So folding the working legs, so the heels on the outside of the hip pulled in as tightly as possible. The other leg, the knee just opens up. And slowly letting ourselves back only as far as we need to to feel that nice intense stretch, doing it slowly so that we don't accidentally activate the quad and try and get it to contract. Uh, once you have hit whatever 
position you can get to and be honest with yourself because we don't want to tear or strain or sprain any muscles. Settle into the position. And now we're going to take four deep breaths. Each time you inhale, visualize the oxygen going right to where you're feeling the most intensity of sensation. Each time you exhale, try and settle a little more deeply into the stretch. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. And now slowly and carefully up, two seated, one hand to the knee, one hand to the ankle, manually unfold, rotate and unfold that leg, bring the other leg to meet it, shake out those knees, flex the feet, and point, and flex, and point, and circle the ankles, first in one direction, and then the other direction. And now, other side. Same position. Remember that we are not symmetrical creatures, so as you slowly let yourself back into the stretch, maybe you can go a little bit farther on this side, maybe you can't go as far, or maybe you're about the same, okay? Anything's possible, but don't force yourself to go more deeply into the stretch than you are prepared to be in, okay? All right, now we are settled in, and we are gonna take our four deep breaths. Here we go. That's one. That's two. That's three. And four. And slowly, but surely, up to seated. One hand to the knee, one hand to the ankle. Manually rotate and unfold the leg. Bring the other leg to meet it. Shake out those knees. Flex the feet. And point. And flex. And point and circle the ankles in one direction and then the other direction. All right, good job, everybody. Woo, Woof. we are done. We are absolutely done. What a good class. Okay, now I'm running a little bit behind where I wanted to be, uh, so I do need to close out class a little bit uh, unceremoniously <laughs> so that I can shower and get myself to my next thing, but oh, it is such a pleasure to be back and streaming again. It's nice to have those rests so that I can come back and really appreciate being here and getting to teach you all and having so much fun. So yeah, thank you for joining me. Um, we've got two more classes left for this week. Friday, remember it's at 5 p.m., not 6 p.m., but 5 p.m. Mountain Time is Functional Home Fitness where we do weight training using objects you can find around the house. And then Saturday morning at 9 a.m. is the weekend kickoff, our awesome strength and stamina focused bodyweight class. So be sure to join for either or both of those classes. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All those handles will be my end cards, but they are all variations on Blanche Case Fitness. My YouTube channel is where I upload all the VODs from these streams, so you never have to miss a class, even if you can't make the live cast. So definitely head over there and subscribe. If you want to help support me financially in making these streams, I have a coffee account for one-time donations, or you can subscribe to this channel if you're able to support a little more long-term. Either way, your donations are always very much appreciated. And if you, yes you, 
want to help keep growing this channel and community, then please tell your friends, loved ones, coworkers, anyone looking for an awesome class. I stream four days a week. We have a great community here. We have a lot of fun and we're getting stronger. We're taking care of ourselves. So the more the merrier. All right, my friends, finish off that water. Make sure to refill it and drink some more. Take that celebratory post-workout shower. Make sure to get some food, start replenishing those glycogen stores, and I will see all of you back here again on Friday. Mwah. Have a great night.